Do you know what my greatest source of escapism was for a few years? Online gaming with my two best friends. Throughout my early adult life, I used to play this game called L Sword, and me and my two best friends in the world would log on every single day, and we would play for hours. And during that playtime, we would talk about everything, about life and love and girls and dick sizes and whatever the case may be. And those were some of the best years of my life, despite the fact that at the time I was in what I would consider to be the deepest depression that I've ever been in my life. Playing video games with friends is one of the most satisfying things people can do. That's why the popularity of live service free-to-play games has sprung up as much as it has. Nothing feels better to a group of people than getting out of school or getting home from work and booting up the game of Apex, Overwatch, League of Legends, Dota, Valorant, and yes, even Dead by Daylight to hop on and play with your friends, do a bunch of silly shit, have fun, win some games, probably lose some games more than win, and just howl around have a good time. It's very important that games allow you to party up with other people, because it's important to allow you to have fun with your friends. Even one-on-one -on -one games like Hearthstone allow you to invite somebody in so that you can both duel with the decks that you've built. And I think that a lot of people just kind of forget this aspect whenever they're arguing over Swifts. If you've been missing streams and want to see live gameplay, then go ahead and check out my YouTube channel, The Kaiser Vods, where I upload every game that I play in multi-hour compilations. We also have a collection of short compilations of clips from stream. We'll see you over there. Link is in the description. Swifts, SWF, or Survive with Friends, is how people refer to survivors partying up together in the game of Dead by Daylight. There seems to be this kind of, what's the word I'm looking for, visceral viewpoint of how people tend to party up in Dead by Daylight. Anytime a killer is losing a game, there is a very good chance that they will cry Swift. If a team seems just a little too coordinated, then Swift gets cried. And the amount of, I guess, power that people pretend like Swifts have is kind of over-exaggerated. There's this idea, this hierarchy in the community that it goes, Swifts are stronger than killers and killers are stronger than solo queue. And that entire hierarchy, I I've agreed with it in the past, but the more that I've thought about it over the past like week or so, the more I think I'm starting to really kind of disagree with that hierarchy because it just assumes that everyone in solo queue is a fucking dumbass and every killer just wins if they go against solo queuers and every swift is fucking team eternal. <laughs> and, and I don't. That's not accurate, right? Because I've met solo queue demons who are absolutely fucking monsters at doing things like juicing and decision making and other things like that. I've met killer mains who don't know their left from their right and are too busy tunneling one person to ignore the fucking four gens being worked on. And what today's video is about, I've met swifts that are absolute bumbling morons. First off, you gotta remember, not every swift is a four man. Most of the time people are playing with like one person, maybe two if that. So the most you're gonna normally run into is a duo and maybe a trio once in a while. And very rarely, very, very rarely are you gonna run into full four man Swifts. The other thing you need to remember is not every Swift is on comms. I personally do open lobbies on my Twitch chat every time I stream Survivor. You can actually join if you're over 18. You have to be over 18 to be in the stream, but you can actually join if you're over 18. We hold open lobbies. You get to hop in. My only two rules are to always be nice to everyone. Just say GG's in the in-game chat. Never talk shit. No matter what happened in the match, just never talk shit. Just say GG's and move on. And then I have a rule about, you know, three or more games, depending on how full we are, etc, etc. But I do it all the time. We're not on comms. 
They just happen to be in the party with me. <laughs> and sometimes some of my chat members, they have to like close my stream or mute it or whatever. So I can't even communicate to them that way. But not every single Swift is on comms. Not every single Swift is, is talking. But the other thing that people need to realize is just because Swifts are talking doesn't mean they're talking about the game. Again, like I said in the beginning of this video, people could be talking about a multitude of things. They could be talking about life. They could be talking about a date that they went on or their day at work or at school or something like that. Most of the time, they are not hard. Okay, I'm almost done with this gen. Okay, what are you doing? All right, I think I can loop from for about another 20 seconds. All right, I'm going to need somebody to take a hit here in 10 seconds. Nine, eight, seven, six. They, they're not tournament calming and to be completely honest with you most of the time even when they are they're really bad at it <laughs> one of the things that i realized at one point i was watching a twitch streamer and they were in a four-man swift and everyone was on comms and they were just saying blatantly incorrect shit <laughs> like like one time they were like okay we need they were we need to hurry up and heal all right everybody come over to this hook we'll heal we'll all reset here they were against the fucking Legion. <laughs> so they all congregated under a hook to try to reset. The Legion found them, instantly injured the three people they managed to heal, and then get his fifth frenzy hit and down them. And that's just a that's just one example, bro. It, it's it's this kind of thing where, like, in, in the back of people's minds, they have this idea that every single person who who plays this game at some point has way more intelligence than they actually do. And I say that just like I, I, like me, bro. Like me. Like, I've been accused of sweating my balls off when I get a 4K at 5 gins. And most of the time, 99% of the time, I am not paying attention to what's happening. I my, my monkey brain sees a survivor, and I go, hoo, 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 and I fucking ape it. And I just go after the survivor. I don't think about who the survivor is. I don't think about which hook they're on. Like, sometimes you'll hear me kind of, like, mentally break down everything that I need to be doing. But most of the time, if I'm playing Hillbilly or Demogorgon or fucking Nurse or whatever, I'm just, I just want to, I just want to move really fast. If I'm playing Huntress or Trickster, I just want to throw things. Like, and that's the way that people who play Survivor work. They just want to work gens. They just want to run around pallets. They're not sitting there trying, they're not playing like there's $10 million on the line 99% of the time because there's not. And there, I'm going to make a video on this separately later on down the road, but I think that people think that everybody who beats them is sweating because this just goes fall, this falls back on the excuses that play, that bad players tend to make that I was talking about a little bit ago. Bad players tend to go, oh, well, they're swiffing, oh my god, and like, you just got to realize that that's just not what happens. See, we need to stop complaining about swiffing because at the end of the day, behavior is never taking the ability to party up with your friends out of the game. That would be one of the most detrimental things they can do. And I don't want them to do that. And I don't know why anybody would want them to do that. Why would you like, people are like, oh, well, it's not fair because of blah, blah, blah. And I've already explained all the reasons why that's all bullshit. But let's just say, let's just say for like a half a second, just for the, the, the benefit of a doubt, that every single Swift you come across is Team Eternal. You're not coming across enough of them for it to matter. You're just not. Most of the fucking time, most of the time you are against solos, maybe a couple of duos. You are not in any way, shape, or form facing Team Eternal every single fucking match. And the reason you're losing matches is most of the time your fault. Complaining about Swifts is boring. I roll my eyes in the back of my head and see the, the, the back of my cranium every time I hear somebody complain about Swifts. And I say this as somebody who doesn't like play with friends ever. I have no friends. Okay, I've got like three friends, and two of them are Bran. All right, <laughs> look, the thing is, is that I just don't have friends. I'm not, I'm not somebody who swifts all the time, who's tired of killers complaining about swifts. I am a killer main, tired of seeing other killer mains come up with dumbass excuses as to why they can't win their games. In conclusion, if you're complaining about Swifts, I just have no real respect for you because the truth of the matter is, is that the only time Swifts ever, ever, ever or something to complain about is if it's a full-on bully squad. If it is a squad that is doing nothing but dedicating their time to making your life miserable, I understand it. But at that point, it's not about Swifts, it's just about toxic people, which are not the same things.
But as always, I don't make these videos just to spout my opinions at you. I make them so that I could hear your thoughts as well. So please leave your comments down below and let me know what you think. And as always, a great big special thank you to our channel members listed on screen now. If you want to find out how to become a channel member today and great get and great and get great perks like seeing videos early, merch discount codes, and more, then please click that join button down below. I love you all and I'll wait. I just wanted to thank, thank you guys for 4K uh, subscribers. If you didn't know, I do have a milestone chart that I posted a while back. Um, so just to let you guys know about that real quick, at 5,000 subs, uh, we'll be responding to your hot takes, and I'll be having Mr. Headache come on and respond to them with me. Uh, then I'm going to, at 10,000 subs, have a live Q&A. At 25,000 subs, I'm going to be doing a community tournament uh, with a prize pool to be determined at the time. At 50,000 subs, I'm going to be doing concept reviews. So I'll ask you guys to submit killer concepts to me, and I'll review all of them in one video. And there's going to be restrictions when we come to that. And then at 100,000 subs, I'll be doing a live Q&A. And once we hit 100,000 subs, I'll have more milestones for the future. But uh, those are all the milestones that I have right now. And my goal is 10,000 by the end of the year. So the fact that I have been back for less than a month and you guys have already gotten me to 4,000 was uh, is, is amazing. So thank you guys so much. Again, I really appreciate it. I have no idea where we'll be by the time this video goes live, but it really does mean the most to me. So yeah, like I said before, I love you all and I'll see you in the next one.